and talk about the specs on these necks, why we like what we like. <laughs> Shit, hold on a minute. <laughs> God, I feel like people are watching me, man. You know? <laughs> Let me think about this. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the second episode of our Semi Hollows build series. So I have Todd on the call on standby. This is the neck building episode. So we're going to talk through uh, or re-talk through the wood and we'll talk through the profiles and dimensions and specs of the necks at the end of the video once you can actually see them. But I think it's probably just worth saying that we talk a lot about the wood and making things that are unique and interesting and beautiful. But I think we both agree that all of those things come a distant second place to actually making something that feels and plays and sounds really good. And I think, I think you're in agreement with me there, Todd. Oh, absolutely. We've talked about this so many times, but the neck makes all the difference in the world. If the neck's not right, nothing else matters to me. I don't care how the guitar sounds. I don't really care how it looks. If the neck is right, everything will be okay <laughs> you know what i mean i totally agree and i think this is probably where in fact it's definitely where i spend the vast majority of the build time is on the neck and getting that right it's certainly the most it's the bit that requires the most precision i agree with that too all right with all that being said let's take a look at what we've done and how we did it
Okay, so we have a couple of necks. So, um, Todd, why don't you take us through yours first, which looks fantastic, by the way. Thank you, brother. Well, I have really almost impressed myself this time, Gio. This thing has turned out not only to be such a lesson teacher, um, it's the first time I've done binding on a fretboard. I did my standard, usual nine piece glue up with the wing A, multiple pieces of wing A veneer, a center strip of curly maple down the middle. This is also the first time I've used a curly maple fretboard or a maple fretboard of any kind. But I bound it with catalogs. I set out to try and leave a strip of that white maple fretboard underneath the binding. And I know I was asking for trouble by doing that because not only have I never done binding before, to start on your first binding project trying to leave that little strip and make it perfectly even on both sides was a real pain. I was really worried about it. I was just about to ask you, how long did it take you to set up to do the cut for that binding channel? At least an hour. Because what I did was I sat this neck in a call sitting on bench cookies so my heel bottom and my headstock would be off the table. And then I put a straight edge on the fretboard and I adjusted the truss rod until I had it as flat as I could get it. I drove a wedge up under the heel to make sure that I had a nice stable surface. The fretboard was still flat at this time too. I just ran the router down the fretboard and I was so pleasantly surprised once I glued this catalogs on there that this thing ended up so, so nice. It's a little wider than what you would normally see as far as binding goes, but I actually like that. It really plays on the, uh, the whole dark light thing, I believe. I think it looks awesome. It looks like the fretboard is inlaid into the neck. That was my whole, you know, we talked about that early on and that was my whole idea for doing this. As a matter of fact, I almost attempted to inlay the fretboard inside the wing A when the, before I thickness this neck down. But the more I thought about it, I just felt like this was a better way to go. Yeah, can, we, can you do like a close up of that line that you've left under the fretboard? Yeah, so there's that line I'm talking about. And it wound up perfectly even on both sides. Anyway, enough about that. I know I go on and on about it because I'm so pleased with how that turned out. I think that looks fantastic. So what did you, what did you do for specs? Right. So what I've done was I made it like a C to D profile. I flattened out my profile a little up towards the 12th fret. It's still my usual 21 millimeters at the first, 23 millimeters at the 12th fret, 43 millimeter wide nut like all my guitars are, and a 56 and a half millimeter uh, width at the 22nd fret. 12 inch radius on the fretboard. And what I'll do is I haven't fretted this neck yet because I don't like to do that until later. I know that's one difference in our process. I only used one 12th fret marker or I only marked the 12th fret. It's got a piece of brass tube, nine millimeter with an eight millimeter piece of pow abalone inside that. And then off to the side of this, since this guitar is an astrolabe, I put two more glow-in-the-dark dots of this stuff called Skur Composites Space Rod. In the dark, it glows aqua blue. I also use that for side dots. Did a nice volute below my nut. I got an eight-degree back angle on the headstock, three-by-three three headstock. It took me so long to get this tuner layout figured out in Inkscape. I finally got it worked out though, so I've got a half a millimeter of splay between each of the strings on each side. I'm sorry, I'm, la I'm laughing because how many messages did we have back and forwards about your, about your headstock? Oh my God, man. And you were so helpful to me though, because I don't know Inkscape that well, and I, I have become so reliant on you for that kind of information. <laughs> but I think you nailed it. And I think the neck is awesome. I've, the, I seem to say the same thing to you constantly, which is that you've got a really nice way of making something complicated 
look clean and simple at the end. And that's a really hard thing to do, but it's a great thing to be able to do. I appreciate that, man. It's not something I actually know how to do. It's just the way it ends up, you know? Anyway, that's my neck. Let's see your neck. Take us through your specs and let us see what you've, uh, what you've done. I know it's going to be awesome, so let's just see it. Well, you saw me laminating my neck blank in the first episode, so... <laughs> Fastest laminate I've ever seen. Okay, so I've got a... Mine is a maple and wenge with mahogany veneer. So I'll show it to the camera. And I'll do a quick view of the front because the bit that I really love is the um, is the Wenge fretboard on this. It looks it's it's such a unique bit of Wenge that matches the uh, the black limber that I've got. I've used the black pearl binding. Oh, that is awesome! I love that binding. Yeah, so it looks. I mean, it's a fairly it's a pretty hard contrast. You know, it it is literally black to white on the binding, but I think it's going to look. It's going to look absolutely fine once I've got the body there because I've already kind of mocked it up. So I'm fairly happy it's the whole thing is going to flow nicely together. So this is a, I've gone with a perfect C profile, which is the profile that I use pretty much on everything now, unless I'm asked to do something different. It's uh, 21 and a half uh, millimeters thick at the first to 23 at the, not at the 12th, actually at the 15th. That's where I measure. I go from the first to the 15th. So it's slightly thicker, it's only about half a mil thicker than I would normally do, but that's kind of where I've ended up with for what I find really comfortable. The other thing that I did notice was that we did our binding at a different time. So you did yours before you did the radius sing, and I did mine after I did the radius sing. So it's probably just worth mentioning as a, as a quick tip, people might have seen it in the, um, in the montage, but all I did was literally I took the off cut of my neck blank and an offcut of the fretboard and just use that as an exact level to do the routing because once it's radiused you can't get your router dead straight just by resting it on top of the fretboard so that's the way that I did that and it worked out absolutely perfectly and that's the way that I'm going to continue to do that I think. That's such a great idea I mean that was the whole reason why I did the binding the way I did it was because I knew I wouldn't have a level surface. It's probably the only bit where people might go backwards and forwards and think, should I do it before, should I do it before, or should I do it afterwards? But actually, there's a couple of good ways. The way that you've done it works really well, and the way that I've done it, I think, works really well as well. So I think I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. It's just probably what you're most confident with doing. I, I agree with that, and I used wood too. So that was another reason why I radiused after the fact. I knew I could incorporate that sanding because my binding is wood. You know. That's just as good a reason as anything else, I think, to do it that way. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is going to be a six in line headstock. The frets are already on here. I just found it easier to do those at the start. The, the dots that I've used are the little four mil mother, and, mother of pearl dot inlays because I think they match quite nicely with the pearl effect on the binding, keeping the whole thing looking kind of nice and simple. So um, what radius did you go with on this one? 12 inch radius. So that's what I... Again, that's what I go with for all of these. So I've noticed neither of us have done our heel yet, which is obviously because we're going to do that after we make the body. We're both, I think, intending to, to carve them in very nicely. The only thing I have got to do is that I've got about another 10 mil to go onto here, and I think I'm going to do that in contrasting wood of some description. So I need to just decide what I'm going to use for that. That's a really beautiful way to do it, and it creates a really super interesting look if you carve that heel into the rest of the body. I think it looks so, so unique. Yeah, I think so too. It's going to be really interesting. And thank you, by the way. And I should probably, shall I show you the shape that I landed on? I didn't mention this. In the first, in the first video, I said that I was going to be doing a slightly revised version of my Telecaster design. But I've since got a couple of those that I need to be building, and one of which is a commission and the guy that I'm building that for, that's the one that's going to come to Sweet Tea, in fact, because this guitar is going to Atlanta. Um, right. But that's going to be a video series. He's happy for me to do it on YouTube. So I don't want to build a couple of tellies at the same time. So I have come up with a new design that I'm going to use for this one. So give me one second and I'll, I'll grab Absolutely. it. 
yeah. Absolutely. I can't wait to see this. I didn't realize you had changed your mind on that shape. Okay. <clears throat> so <laughs> I've come quite a long way from a telly. And this is one of the designs that I mocked up for someone I'm building a guitar for, but we went the other way. So, but I love it. I love it. It looks like, um, it looks like, uh, it looks like Flash with a pointed heel. <laughs> it does. I love it. So that's the, uh, that's the plan and that's the shape that I'll be doing for this one. So I thought I should probably, that was lucky I remembered that to show it. But you were saying about a couple of builders to, uh, that you wanted yeah. to mention. Yeah, there's a couple of guys I want to mention. Um, the first one being Jackson from Big Unit Guitars. He's always so kind to me on my videos. I try to return that favor. Jackson's a super cool guy, great guitar player, and a wonderful addition to our community. So you guys go check out Big Unit Guitars here on YouTube. The second, I need to clarify something I said in the first video. And that involves Curtis from Goth Rider Creations. I think I said he was planning on building a guitar for less than $500, and then I changed that to $200. He's actually going to build this guitar for less than $85. That is phenomenal. I cannot believe it. I mean, the, I can't wait to see this thing. That's what I'm saying. Curtis is a super cool guy. You guys, go check out Goth Rider Creations here on YouTube. So those are my two mentions. Gio, I'm sure you got a couple of guys you want to mention too, so let's hear that. I do. In fact, the first being Chris Garland, who I think probably most people that follow GGBO will know him. Uh, he builds fantastic acoustics, and I met him for the first time at the Italy Guitar Show this year. We were both exhibiting, and I saw his GGBO build from last year, and it was phenomenal. It's beautiful guitar and I think he's doing a build he's just started his build his first video has gone out and this is going to be a build that he's doing I'm pretty sure he's doing it as a commission and he's filming it for GGBO so that's going to be fantastic and the second is I think he's pretty much already finished actually which is Neil aka NSJ guitars uh, he's doing a black limber neck through build this year and he's just I mean he's for a start, he's built loads of guitars this year and everything that he builds has kind of has quite a specific style to it. And it's a style that I really like. I completely agree with that, man. I have been so impressed with how many videos Neil's been posting lately, man. He has been like a freight train since the start of this year. I mean, it's like video after video after video. I'm, it's, it's great to see someone who is dedicating that much time to building guitars and as far as I know he's keeping all of them you know I don't even think he's trying to sell these things no and I don't know whether he's got a plan to or not I think possibly does just because of the quality of the stuff that he builds but he's also he's really interesting to listen to you know it's just a great channel to to um, to relax and watch in the evening so I highly recommend going and checking out his channel I, I agree man both those guys are great Chris has always been super cool to me and Neil has too so you know, I think as long as we keep mentioning these guys that wonderful additions to the community, you guys, everyone we try to mention here, it's not only about the GGBO, it's just because we're into the guitars that they build and to the content that they're putting out. So that's what it really boils down to. All right, you guys, thank you so much for stopping by the channel and checking out the video. Be on the lookout for the next episode over on Geo's channel. And as always, you guys, peace and love. All right. Do you want to make one last comment so it's not me hogging all the last part of the video? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm quite happy with it. <laughs> He's doing a carve top on his channel. And... Sorry. <laughs> 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 that's the sound of like the cut off that's the end of your tunnel log i didn't realize i was on a timer we're in trouble i'm just gonna sit back and then we'll have one of me going oh, is he still talking okay <laughs> 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 now i've got to get to bed come on <laughs> <laughs> but but i'm not done i'm gonna tell you about this pencil i ordered the famous Pentel Graph Gear 1000. You are such a nerd. <laughs>
<laughs> I know, man. I never knew this about myself, you know? I always thought, hell, I'm cool, man. I'm a guitar player. I'm, I play drums, too. <laughs> that, that ship has sailed. It was so unbelievably sad. <laughs> I'm going to have to have a sip of coffee on that one.